marriage merger in the ocean of life except from marriage mysteries and dimensions beyond until the river of your life merges with the ocean of life remember the river of life your life is like a river and the entire existence is the ocean of life until river of your life merges with the ocean of life it will not attain any meaning and until this happens even if you somehow succeed it will be the greatest failure of your life indeed marriage is the merger in the ocean of life life is energy life is an infinite reservoir of energy on the shores of time infinite waves go on striking no end no beginning everything is just in the middle you are a small insignificant wave you are an infinitesimal seed of infinite possibilities quite naturally the wave wants to be the ocean and naturally the seed wants to be the tree and the seed wants to be the tree unless the seed blossoms into a flower fulfillment is not possible man has an unsatiable quest to be god before this there are many temporary resting points or possibilities none of these are the ultimate outcome in the night you may stay at many places for rest never make these places your permanent resting place only god can be your house or the resting place god does not mean a person sitting somewhere as has been conceived by almost all the religions god means your ultimate possibility god is formless without any name god is not sitting somewhere god is your ultimate happening beyond which there is nothing and no possibility as well beyond which there is nowhere to go this is the ultimate destination this is fulfillment you will remain restless and despondent until you attain to this fruition you may become rich you may become very famous none of these things can ever fulfill you somehow you will continue to feel something is missing no matter how hard you try to forget this you will never succeed in a sense it is good that you cannot forget this otherwise the seed will miss the opportunity for fruition until the seed attains to its fruition and the fragrance merges with the infinite there is no possibility of fulfillment until the river of your life merges with the ocean of life it will not attain any meaning and until this happens even if you somehow succeed it will be the greatest failure of your life unlucky are those who consider small successes as the ultimate success really lucky are those who have the awareness of this only such a person somehow understands this and whenever you attain success you make that place your resting place you seek new openings in your failures unless you reach god there is no fulfillment and also there can be none 
in the beginning i said life is energy this energy has three forms first is the seed form in this nothing is manifest in seed everything remains latent this is the body form second is the tree form in which everything becomes manifest yet still the soul or pran remains unmanifest and the last is the flower form in this form even the pran the life force is manifest fruition happened the petals are now open fragrance merges with the infinite the petals are open now fragrance merges with the infinite when life energy attains to this fruition only then indeed you are married then your marriage is the fruition of love certainly then your marriage is the fruition of love naturally the seed implies desire the desire to grow tree implies love and the final is the flower a flower implies the ultimate fruition a merger and oneness as long as you are in the seed form you are full of desire or lust body needs lust love will evolve in your life only when the seed becomes a tree this is the mind realm more subtle only then the nectar of life will ooze into your barren life to attain to fruition is the ultimate happen this is the highest mountain peak such an understanding is essential to help you understand the sutras of marriage or human relation better you are body you are mind in fact you are body mind realm and you are also something beyond these two as well and you are also something beyond these two as well but this you know not body is gross to know the gross no intelligence is needed to know body no meditation is required the mind is relatively subtle yet you can still get a glimpse a slight glimpse of the mind it is so because mind is between gross and the subtle the mind is connected to both body and to the soul as well from the side of the body you do something to get a glimpse of the mind but you never get a glimpse of the soul to you soul appears to be an empty word that is meaningless when you hear the word soul no ripples arise in you the word creates restless in you instead lust or passion is associated with the body lust is gross just like your body the body looks for lust the body calls for its counterpart in the other one sure always remains incomplete without the other both male and female seek one another both male and female seek one another both male and female are complementary energies male and female are two shores of life energy to flow just as a river bed remains incomplete without the two shores it is the two shores that make the river bed relevant and then water flows so to both male and female are complementary energies 
male and female are two shores for life energy to flow just as a river cannot flow without the two shores so too life cannot flow without the male and female energies as two shores these are two energies that complement one another separate from each other they remain despondent separate from each other they remain despondent both male and female remain incomplete without each other at a gross level this is essential the union of two energies is momentary for a moment the two bodies merge into one another however this happens only for a moment and after this union a great despondency descends this separation after the dissolution is always painful you think this union is all this physical union brings separation and pain certainly the union of two bodies is a momentary happening that which is gross that which is gross cannot merge into one another gross cannot merge into another gross how can we understand this you take two blocks of ice put them together one top of the other or close by they will never merge they will maintain their separate identities but when ice begins to melt there is a flow because cross does not move it is stationary the block of ice remains where it is only when it begins to melt that a flow begins and when ice the two blocks of ice begin to melt the water flowing from the two gross begin to merge into one another really gross can never merge or meet gross has its limitations if you try to unite two blocks of ice these can never merge into one another in their gross form and the moment the two blocks of ice melt and become fluid like they can certainly merge into one another ice has a boundary water has no boundary the moment you are fluid like all boundaries disappear human body is frozen like ice human body seeks lust that is frozen like ice and mind is fluid like water ice has limitations water flows beyond boundaries such is the nature of love yet still water has its limitations you can mold the mind the way you want this can be done with the human body a child is born in a hindu family take him to a muslim family now you can condition the child into a muslim upbringing the body cannot change you can change the mind of the child and changing the mind implies conditioning the child differently but you cannot condition or change the body the mind will become muslim there is no way to change the body that will remain connected to its origin the child may not even remember that he was ever a hindu as far as the mind is concerned it can become a hindu or a muslim or christian such is the freedom of the mind human mind is fluid like it goes on changing each moment today you may like one person tomorrow you may not like the same person one who was the center of your life once one without who the sun never rose and never set things have changed now 
that person is no more significant for you that person does not create any ripples in your being anymore such is the nature of the mind and such is the understanding of those who remain within the four walls of the mind conditioned imprisoned the fluidity of the mind is unique human body demands lust and mind requires love however the fluidity of the mind is unique one moment it is fluid like and next moment this fluidity is no more body can be bought but not the mind body is gross mind is somewhat conscious mind has the glimpse of awareness however it is just a glimpse mind seeks love mind seeks someone who is ready to sacrifice and surrender unconditionally mind wants to give itself to someone mind wants to give itself to someone when beyond boundaries two minds meet that which flows in between is love when beyond boundaries beyond all finiteness two minds meet and that which flows in between is love that which attracts below mind is lust yet still there is an existence beyond mind beyond mind there are no boundaries only an infinite sky exists the ice has melted now water is evaporating and as the steam arises it disappears beyond a certain love the soul is like a steam you get a glimpse of it sometimes through the body and at other times through the mind however these glimpses are only fading example who can demand the soul the body demands another body this union is short lived so to mind seeks another mind the realm of mind is still deeper body seeks another body the union is short lived mind can go a little further mind even aspires to go a little far mind claims love to be eternal if you have really known love you will come to know this body may disappear but love lives on lovers may disappear but love is continuing why seek that which is short lived when there is darkness why to seek that which is short lived when there is darkness all of a sudden there is lightning lightning is fragile and short lived and after lightning darkness deepens in the realm of sorrow happiness comes for a fraction of a moment and then the sorrow and suffering becomes even more intense the soul does not recognize love as conceived by the mind mind is fluid like today this flows towards this one and tomorrow its path is changed just as a river changes its path so too the love that evolves out of the mind changes its path and then it loves someone else mind cannot be trusted beyond a certain extent as far as love is concerned as far as eternity of love is concerned when mind is in love it makes promises when mind is in love it makes promises of trust the nature of the mind is change changeable the nature of the mind is ever changeable it goes on changing mind is flowing 
soul seeks the eternal the joy that overflows when soul recognizes the answering soul is taste of devotion harmony oneness and the orgasmic experience soul seeks the eternal the joy that overflows when soul recognizes the answering soul is taste of devotion harmony oneness and the orgasmic experience it is a fading glimpse now when love transcends its boundaries of finiteness it attains a new texture and it enters the eternal realm of bliss when love transcends its boundaries of finiteness it attains a new texture and it enters the realm of bliss this realm of bliss is eternal thus begins devotion soul has no boundaries the reach of the body is short lived mind goes a little far love is eternal through the body lust is born lust is gross through the mind you get the glimpse of love love is somewhat fluid like soul seeks eternal soul seeks the formless transcendence beyond body mind and being is the union of formless to formless soul seeks eternal soul seeks the formless transcendence beyond the body mind and being is the union of formless to formless it is at this plane lovers and beloveds dissolve into one another it is at this plane lovers and beloved dissolve into one another they experience the cosmic eternal nature of the being and its oneness through two bodies they experience the cosmic eternal nature of the being the nature of the being is cosmic it is oneness it is all pervading it is only then they experience the cosmic eternal nature of the being and its oneness through two bodies this is the state of samadhi the ultimate through the male female relation this is the state of samadhi the ultimate through the male female relation imagine you are in your room all the windows and doors are closed no light no breeze no sound of the chirping of the birds can really enter within this is how the body is nothing can reach now you open the windows and the doors and as soon as the doors and windows are open the light breeze sound of the birds and the fragrance of the flower enters indeed it blends in it rushes in this is the realm of the mind you get a glimpse of the infinite sky this is how the mind is but you get only the framed image through the window you get a framed image still you are in the mind a little free yet still in a cage of finiteness finiteness of a different nature now you have decided to come out of the room you are not getting the glimpse of the sun alone now you have decided to come out of the room you are not getting the glimpse of sun alone now the entire sun is showering on you now the breeze is not coming to you instead the breeze surrounds you now you are one with the sound of the birds 
you are one with the breeze you are one with the sunlight and the rays you are one with the entire existence now try to understand these sutras of marriage try to understand these meditatively and lovingly your logic will not take you into inner realm of these sutras your logic your understanding will not take you into the inner realm of these sutras it seems something is missing and that which is missing is the beginning and this explanation is just in the beginning the scripture is already in the process these are the pages from the scripture of life these are not for those who are not yet free from the realm of the body and that concerns with the body this is not for those who are not yet free of the body and the mind the sage leaves these two realms right there and therefore begins these sutras if you are not yet free from lust and all that relates to the body and also all that relates to the mind then you are not yet ready for these sutras of male female relation certainly you are not free for these sutras of male female relation then you are not yet ready for transcendence if body is still interests you then you are not ready for these sutras is still the search for the ultimate has not yet begun is still if you are either the body or the mind then you cannot understand these sutras is still if you are not is still if you are either the body or the mind then you cannot understand these sutras i am not interested in your words certainly i am not interested in your words that you want to know the secrets i can see all that is going on within you this does not mean that these sutras are for the older ones these sutras are for the one who has reached the last realm in the process of transformation indeed the sutras are for the one who has reached the last realm in the process of transformation sometimes a person can attain maturity even in his youth suddenly a child jumps from the seed stage and becomes a tree the question is of awareness not age or anything else certainly the question is of awareness not age or anything else therefore these secrets of sex therefore these secrets of sex are not revealed to each and every one of you these ever remain mysteries for someone who has attained to transcendence someone like watson who has attained to transcendence these sutras are not any definitions or description it is like one who has tasted the sweet fruit what will he do he will enjoy he will go on narrating to others he may start singing the glory you will try to correlate your experiences with those who have experienced themselves it is like you want to enter the temple yet still you have not entered the temple this is not an effort to bring the taste of the being in the temple of those who have not yet begun who have not yet been to the temple this is indeed an effort to bring the taste of the being in the temple to those who have not yet been to the temple yet still you have not entered the temple
This is then an effort to bring the taste of being in the temple to those who have not yet been to the temple. For such people there can be no definition. Definition can only happen between those who know. Therefore this explanation. Definition can complete in a sentence or so, but the explanation is something different. Explanation is always longer and through explanation we only give a glimpse. And through explanation we only give a glimpse. Explanation is true to some extent and to some extent it is not. It is so because when a learned one speaks to an ignorant one, he speaks the language that he can understand. When a Buddha has to speak to those who have not yet attained to enlightenment, he has to use their language. If Buddha uses his language, then he cannot make his message understood. If a Buddha uses his language, then he cannot make his message understood. In order to make the people understand, the master has to use the language of the people. In order to make the people understand, the master has to use the language of the people. Then it can no more remain a definition, instead it will become an explanation. It will become a device, it will become a technique and this technique cannot work because it is not philosophy. It is the energy field of the master that is translated into words and technique. It is the energy field of the master that works in the disciple. Therefore because of intense desire to know the secrets of sex and marriage, I begin the explanation. Therefore, because of intense desire to know the secrets of sex and marriage, I begin the explanation. The first narration explains sex as the utmost expression of love through the body. Remember, the first narration explains sex as the utmost expression of love through the body. I had explained earlier, lust is the beginning of the journey. I had explained earlier, lust is the beginning of the journey and the ultimate flowering of love. I had explained earlier, lust is the beginning of the journey and the ultimate flowering is love. Through lust one day you reach to love. And then love gives you the wings to soar in the infinite sky. First you have to reach to love. You have to come out of the quicksand of lust. And only then love will give you the wings so that you can soar in the infinite sky. Only then love will give you wings to soar in the infinite sky. But to reach the ultimate, but to reach the ultimate in sex, you have to pass through love. For this devotion is the tool. Tantra worships the female as deity because it is through this deity in togetherness you are aspiring to attain the ultimate. This is the ultimate in marriage. This is the very essence of male-female relation. Tantra worships the female as deity. Because it is through this deity, in togetherness, you are aspiring to attain the ultimate. This is why love is given importance. On one side of the love is lust and on the other side is transcendence. Love bridges lust and transcendence. Love bridges lust and transcendence. Love bridges sex and transcendence. 
Love is connected to both lust and the ultimate. If any explanation is to be given of lust, love has to be the way. And also if ultimate has to be defined, love has to be the medium once again. And if ultimate has to be defined, love has to be the medium of love again. Love is in between both lust and the ultimate, the transcendence. Love bridges both lust and ultimate. Love bridges both lust and ultimate. Love is the balance between the two. If those who have known the secrets of sex have to explain these secrets to one who does not know the language, then besides love there can be no other way. Nothing can be said about lust. Nothing can be understood about love. Also nothing can be said or understood about the ultimate either. Love is the only thing that we can speak. Love is the only thing that connects the two shoes. Love is flow. Do not make it stagnant. Allow it to flow within the limited boundaries. It does not matter if the other does not do things for you. Your spouse does not do things for you. She may have attained or he may have attained a state of stagnancy, but you are in a different realm. You are connected to a different energy field. You allow to flow your love in myriad ways. Even when it is not needed, you allow it to flow. Let love be your fragrance, love. Let love be your ground. Let love be your way. In myriad ways, it seeks nothing. You need not ask someone. Just go on sharing your love in myriad ways. For instance, if your spouse does not cook things for you, would you do the same for her or him? When I say share your love, share your being, share your understanding, I mean if you are cooking, cook for everyone, share it with everyone. If he or she does not bring things for you, but when you have an opportunity, you bring it and share. This is what I mean when you are flowing in love. Love seeks no reward. Love is a reward unto itself. And a different feeling, a different understanding will dawn in you when you continue to flow, when you allow the love to flow. In love, lust still remains to some extent. However, in ultimate, lust is no more. In lust, there is the trace of love. That is why one remains entangled in lust. Maybe there is even one person to love in lust, but certainly there is. Maybe there is even one person to love in lust, and this one person renders a new texture to lust. Remember, maybe there is even one person to love in lust, and this one person renders a new texture to love. This one person love gives a new expression to lust and hides its ugliness and gives an indication of its utility. Both lust and love are connected to one another. Therefore, love is not pure love. There is still a trace of lust in it. When lust leans towards lust, it gets defiled. When lust leans towards love, it gets defiled. And when love leans towards lust, it gets sanctified. 
let your love lean towards the lust love lends its nature to lust love lends its purity sanctity and sacredness to lust it gives a new dimension to lust let your love let your understanding give a new dimension to lust let your love lends its nature its qualities to lust only this much for now now the journey is alone alone you have to enter these sutras now the journey is alone i have spoken alone you have to enter these sutras certainly my energy field surrounds you certainly my energy field surrounds you